25 years ago or so, uh, I was fortunate enough to be asked to go on a tour that visited a, a, a big collector in Cincinnati. And he had, in, he had a house, he was an engineer, he loved antique cars, he had amazing cars. And in his house he had 25 or 30 cars spread throughout his house. He had a Mercer race about in his bathroom. He had Duesenbergs in his living room. And uh, I was invited to come along with uh, a couple guys that were going to visit him and see his cars. And as we were walking through the collection, and I was completely flabbergasted with what he had, this car sat uh, over in the corner. And I was a Packard guy. I'd fallen in love with Packards. And uh, this car just caught my fancy. I just instantly fell in love with it. I didn't know anything about its history. I didn't know what uh, that had been Carl Fisher's car. I didn't know about the racing heritage. I didn't know anything about it other than I just loved the car. I loved the way it looked. I loved the, the uh, style of it. I loved the, uh, the brass accompanying uh, features. Uh, it was just a really neat car. The cars by themselves are fascinating and interesting because of the engineering and the styling and their place in history. But when you can take an individual car and put it together with its history, it makes it twice as interesting. So, you know, we have some wonderful cars in our collection that I don't know anything about. But the cars that people really love to see are the cars with the story, where you can tie them back to the history, the people that own them, how it affected and changed their lives, how the car was utilized, um, you know, how it intersected with, with, with the time. And those are, those are the stories that people are most connect with in life. And so this car, because of this incredible story, it tells a story like no other car. Um, so it's a truly an amazing time capsule. And the other thing that's really fascinating, it's the only tangible link to Carl Fisher. There's no other tangible link to Carl Fisher. I mean, this is the steering wheel, unrestored, that Carl Fisher drove around the 8500 track. This is what he used as the base car for the 1915 Indy 500. It's the car he used surveying the Lincoln Highway, the first coast-to-coast -coast road across America. So it's really an, an, an amazing piece of history. And it's an amazing car in itself. This was Packard's top of the line. It was a car that uh, Carl uh, designed for his personal use. There's, only, there's no other car like it. It's the only one ever built. It's a custom body, custom chassis. It was designed to be a car fast enough that he could pace the 500 with it, but also that he could take out uh, on road trips and use as a personal car, too. Just start with one and, and, and build a collection and work your way up. You know, go out and find something that, that you can work on, that you can enjoy, and when you get done, you can actually enjoy driving it. And start from there. Pick an era that you like, pick an era that excites you, that, that you like the styling or the performance or uh, its, it's plot in history, and, and just go for it. There's so much out there now. I mean, you can, you can YouTube almost anything anymore. So the internet has really opened up a whole new spectrum in the hobby as far as access, to, uh, to history, access to how-to stuff, access to parts, uh, access to people. Uh, so it's really opened up a, a, a wide avenue. Well, I think because if you don't understand where you've been, you can't understand where you're going. And uh, these cars represent different times uh, through our history. Uh, they represent the, the history of our country and, and how this country was built maybe more than any other thing that, that uh, we can collect. And it, to me, they have reached a level of uh, artwork. You know, one of the things that I think is so wonderful about this car is the patina that it has and the originality of its features. Um, it's almost like sculpture. I think most people don't realize the contributions that were made by Indiana automakers. You know, they, Indiana, uh, Indianapolis was the southern Detroit. I mean, there was as many cars here as it was ever produced in Detroit. And the incredible cars, they had amazing companies. You look at the Auburn, Cord, Duesenberg, Coal, Premier, National. Uh, it just goes on and on and on. And these were all fabulous companies building wonderful cars.